This person is the country manager in Spain and Portugal for Google Cloud. He had a boat, or he has a boat, really, and he loves everything with the sea, but he combines this by living in Madrid and having two children that is one and two years old. So I don't think anyone in the room can get this together. <laughs> but he's, he's struggling to, to do more sailing in his life. And when he's not doing that, he has 25 years of experience in general management, marketing, sales, and business development in leadership positions, like in Mac Microsoft, Vodafone before, and now Google. He's uh, bringing with him the broad knowledge of internet, IT, communication, working for worldwide leading companies, like I mentioned. Please welcome Isaac Hernandez. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lars. And, and let me start by thanking Travelgate for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to be, to be here, excited to be here in Palma. I have to start with uh, two disclaimers. I'm not an expert in travel, but I come from the Canary Islands, in Tenerife. My family has been working in hotels all their lives, so for me it's something very familiar, even, even personal. The second disclaimer is I'm not an expert on or guru in, in technology. I think it is very difficult to be a guru in these technologies. But it is true that I have been working 30 years in great companies in IT, so I will be sharing something that, that I've been learning about uh, these uh, 30, 30 years. No? Uh, in fact, uh, I will start by, by that, by doing a summary of where we are. No? I think uh, 30 years ago, uh, I, we all started using personal computers. The personal computer was born, and this was create, uh, created a, a revolution, <clears throat> uh, making it more democratic, the access to computing power. A few years later, internet allowed that computer not to be alone anymore. It was connected all the time to other computers, to other services, to the web, and this was clearly a revolution. A few years later, mobile changed everything again. Because that computer, that computing power, that connection was going with you to every place you were going. With your smartphone, you are connected. You are connected to the world, to your applications, to your users, and so on. And lately, and we have been discussing this for a while, we have been talking about machine learning and artificial intelligence and how this is going to be changing again everything. So it has been very exciting 30 years in the past. No? How many of you remember this device? <coughs> 720 kilobytes, okay? Compare that with uh, 256 gigabytes. We have multiplied by 200,000 times the amount of storage we are able to put in this type of device. How many remember this other device? Okay, how to connect to the internet at 2.4 kilobits per second. If you compare that with the fiber that you probably have at home and at work, we are multiplying again by 100,000 times the speed of the connections you are getting. You may not remember this one, but this was the computer that we used to launch the man to the moon. And if you compare that to your smartphone, this is probably 1,000 times more powerful than that computer at that time. But not only that, many of the devices that we used to have have been completely replaced by the smartphone. So our life has been changing a lot. So we may have the feeling that, OK, the transformation is done. All the transformation happened. The thing is, and the important thing is, the transformation is about to begin. So we are at the start of what technology will do for us in our personal lives and our professional lives. Let me share you one video of a conference that happened exactly one year ago in Google in, uh, in, in California, in Google I.O. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. 
Okay, great. Thanks. Great. great. Have a great day. Bye. So as you may have uh, guessed, one of these voices was a computer. And it's completely impossible to differentiate the computer from the human. And this is just the start. Machines are able to see better than humans. Machines are able to talk. Machines are able to translate better than humans. Machines are starting to do many things that in the, in the past we were, we were not thinking they were going to be able to do. Driving cars or many of the other things that will be coming in the next few years. No? And this is all because of the power of artificial intelligence. So the message here is be ready because the transformation is again about to start. Or oh, it is still in transformation, and we are still at the very early stages of what the, the next years will come, will come and, and drive. Now, so we have this thing in the future, the possible disruption, the opportunity, the challenges coming out of a moving, of a moving uh, world, of this uh, VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous that we are all facing in this situation. Google is facing a similar situation. Google has celebrated now 20 years. We are a 20 years old company. We were discussing with Travelgate that they, we are older than they are. They are only seven years and they are already doing amazing things. And the challenge for Google is, OK, we have been successful, but we want to be successful in the future too. So we need to keep on improving ourselves, on rising the bar. And, and I want to share with you what are the pillars of that uh, need of that transformation inside Google. No? And the, the whole thing is about betting on innovation. So I think Travelgate did very well on choosing innovation talks, because everything is all about innovation, how to be agile, how to be improving our businesses day after day, that we are able to confront with the challenges and the opportunities coming of the future. And innovation, you may think that innovation is all about having cool spaces and cool offices. And, and this is not true at all. Obviously, this would be very easy because if you have some money, you put some nice uh, offices and you give free food to your employees and you, this will not drive innovation. It is certainly important. Innovation for Google is the combination of two things, people and technology. And I would say that this is the true also for your companies. The same thing, exactly. If you want to be innovative, you will need to do a significant bet on people and technology. And we have been talking about technology for a while, but if I have to choose one of the two, I could go for people. Because people at the end will be buying, renting, or, 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 or creating the technology that you will need. So the emphasis on people is really important. And I've been working in Google for five years, and I will, I will tell you honestly that that has been the most impressive side of Google that I was not expecting, the human side. And that is the secret sauce. So Please keep on thinking about people. Let me share with you, I will talk later about technology, but let me share with you some key messages. We don't have time to go deeper, but some key messages about people. People are the most important thing in our companies. And I think we all agree on that. But we all agree on that, but we never, or sometimes, we do not behave in a, in a consistent way. And in Google, this is a principle that drives all decisions inside the company. The way we hire, the way that we develop people, the way we compensate people, the way we, we empower people, and so on. A few messages for you. If people are the most important asset in your company, hiring is a, the, critical, the most critical process inside your organization. In Google, this is a process where all employees participate. This is not a process driven by human resources. This is the most important process you, you have to do. And it is important to raise the bar and to make sure that you, you are not satisfied with the good enough, that you really go for the best people, because that will be the people driving the innovation inside your company. So put a lot of focus into hiring and making sure that uh, you, you hire the, the best people, even if that process will take longer. We sometimes need to, 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 to confront the short-term opportunities, and we try to hire people quickly, and I think that is a mistake. We need to hire the right people and take some time on this thing. The second thing we do is empowering users. This is very important. You hire smart people. Once you have smart people in your company, what you want is to empower them to bring new ideas, to question the status quo, okay? to, to give them the opportunity to dream their, to make their dreams true. And this is very important also if you really want to drive uh, innovation inside your company. You need to have, have, have a way to, to, to uh, canalize the passion inside your employees. You would be making a mistake if you are finding, uh, hiring a smart people and then you are micromanaging them. This would be completely, completely stupid. In Google, we have a rule called the 80-20 rule, where every employee can dedicate 20% of their time 
to whatever the project they want, whatever project they want. And this is pre-approved. And uh, this is for us a key tool of how to drive innovation, because if people want to think or want to create a new business or a new solution, they will be pre-approved to do it inside your company, and this is bringing many innovations to Google. Gmail is an innovation happening out of this 20%. So this concept of empowering people, I think it is very important. And the third concept, and I'm not going to go deeper here, is that individual talent is important, but collective intelligence is even more important. The world is complex, very complex, and we need to do everything in your hands to make sure that people collaborate and that we are able to have diverse teams connected together and working together on finding the solutions for the problems and for the opportunities that we have ahead of us. So we, we try to think, and this is not for Google, this is from the president of uh, Amazon, the, the rule of the two pizzas. Innovation usually happens in a small team of people that you can feed with two pizzas. Four, six, eight people. Google is not more innovative because of having 100,000 employees. And startups and Travelgate is a good example of how a, a small set of people can drive innovation if they are passionate about what they want to do and if they have a clear vision of where they want to head. So these important parts of, of people is something that we need to remember. No? And, and, and I think it, this is a technology event, more or less, but I wanted to give the opportunity to, to think a little bit about the people. And then talking about technology, I guess you have been using this uh, box uh, probably today in, in, in some occasions. Behind this simple box that invites you to just uh, write, in reality what we have is this other thing. In the last 20 years, Google has been building some of the most complex data centers in the world. We have literally millions of computers working together to create the magic that you go there to the, small, to the small box, you type something, and in question of milliseconds, you get many options for travel, for hotels, for every, everything you may be thinking of when you are considering getting some information in, in the system. No? So this is what we have been building over the last 20 years, and this is our differentiation. The technology that we have to build from scratch, there was no technology in the market able to handle the amount of information that we wanted to handle. Basically, the mission of Google is get all the information in the world and make it useful and accessible for everyone. No? And this is not only about computers. This is also, or let me give you an example so you get a dimension of, uh, of what I'm talking about. This is a satellite, satellite picture of one of our data centers. And we have uh, 20, 30 of them in the world. And this is in South Carolina. And this is the Real Madrid Stadium, okay? I'm using Real Madrid and not Barcelona to compensate a little bit here <laughs> the debate on football, no? <clears throat> so you can, you can imagine how many computers, how many spaces, how many interesting things are happening in this type of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of things. And why? Why did we create this type of thing? Well, the, the other thing is this is all about connections and fiber. And Google has deployed massive amounts, hundreds of uh, millions of kilometers of fiber optics across the different uh, oceans to be able to connect. Latency, that is critical for your business, critical for travel, it is also critical for Google. Okay, so we have uh, 2,000 points of presence all over the world where people can connect directly to Google. And that allows us to have some of the experiences that you are using probably when you have, uh, when, when you have been using Google Connections. We need that because at this moment, we have the privilege and the responsibility to be running eight services, each of them with more than one billion users. We have more than two billion users of Android. We have 1.5 billion users of YouTube, real-time video, streaming of real-time video. So latency and, again, the connections and the computers and the, and the networks are critical to make these type of experiences in reality very good. So why am I sharing this? Because I'm sharing this because the good news is that for some time, these data centers, the fiber optic, was an asset that our Google developers were using. But for the last few years, we have decided to make them available to you. Okay? And this is the purpose of Google Cloud. Google Cloud is the organization inside of Google that provides you the technology that we have been using, that we are using for big data, for artificial intelligence, for infrastructure, for developing applications, for whatever thing. And we are making it available to the customers, okay? And Travelgate, again, is a good example of a customer who is using our technology to make their services real, real, and live. Cloud is a transformative uh, technology, 
And cloud, for me, the, the most important thing to remember about cloud, not going too technical, is this concept of no limits. We already have too many complexities trying to understand the travel ecosystem, how to partner, how to compete, what are the new entrants, how to work with the, with the incumbents and these type of things. Technology shouldn't be a limitation. You should be able to dream your business. You should be able to think about what it is that you want to accomplish, and technology should be there to do it. And it should be easy, it should be cheap, and it should be uh, quick to, to do it in a, in a simple way. And this is exactly what cloud is allowing for all, for all of us. And uh, in the case of Google, we have four principles, or three principles where we are betting. The first thing is infrastructure, cables, and this type of things are not your core business. This is our core business. So we want to make sure that you have the infrastructure that can scale to the billions of users you may have in the future, like, like Rakuten or like Alibaba or, 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 or the others, without being concerned about these type of things. And security is a must. Security, we haven't talked too much. I think there is an open space later to talk about security because technology has accelerated a lot and has improved a lot. Cybersecurity has also sophisticated a lot. So security will be more and more and more a concern for every company that operates, that operates in a digital company. So I think this important principle of infrastructure, security, and networking that works and works always is critical. The second thing is the value will not get out of infrastructure. Infrastructure needs to work, and you will not have any security problem. But the value will get out of getting all the insights from your data and using that data to create this machine learning algorithms and to create all the innovations that you are driving. No? And this is an area where Google has been uh, mastering for some years. I mean, in fact, we are a big data company. This is all about Google. Google was the, the, the inventors of the map and reduce uh, technology that started and become later Hadoop and all the others. And we have been doing uh, big data and machine learning for many, many years. This type of technology is something that we are also providing to our customers. And the third topic is you do not want to make the mistakes of the past on being locked in to a specific provider, technology provider, and make it very difficult to move from one technology to the other. So we are trying to build a cloud, a technology that is always open, easy to connect to whatever you have at this moment, and available for you to communicate and collaborate across different clouds if this is your decision. Okay? So this is an important imperative principle that we are driving inside our cloud technology. In fact, in summary, we are providing many solutions. I'm not talking about products and solutions today, but we do have many solutions that are being used by most of the travel companies in the world. Our maps solution, our API solution, and we have the, the leader in, in API management in the world, a company called a a IPG that we bought a few years ago. The solutions that we have for big data, the solutions that we have for infrastructure, for developing mobile applications, and, and many new things. And today, by the way, it's Google I.O. also happening in California. Today, we will be announcing the new version of Android, Android Q, and many other innovations that I think will be as successful as the ones that we announced one year ago with this example that I was sharing with you of the conversation of the computer and the human, and the human interactive. Uh, I want to end by, by, by congratulating Travelgate on the three pillars that they have decided, this concept of network, partnership, and innovation. I think those three pillars are necessary for all of us. Again, the complexity coming out of the environment is pushing all of us to make sure that we collaborate and that we do keep the focus on, on innovation. And my last thinking is uh, something that uh, sometimes when we need to think about how to create a disruptive innovation, we use this type of thinking, no? and this is a picture of Astro Teller. Astro Teller is the director of the formerly called Google X, now called X. It's our innovation, innovation uh, facility for the disruptive innovation. So the self-driving cars were born here, or many of the other dramatic uh, improvements we are doing in the world are coming from here. And, and the message is, sometimes when we try to solve a problem, we try to think about 10x. Instead of improving something 10%, we try to improve something by multiplying by 10, making it 10 times more easy, 10 times cheaper, 10 times uh, quicker, whatever. No? And I think that puts all of us in the mindset of the disruptors, of the people who want to get into your business and try to do things in a different way, using all the advantages that the technology has been doing in the past few years. It is not easy, obviously, to multiply by 10 whatever metric you may have, 
But if you multiply by two, because you fail, you will be getting very interesting uh, improvements in your business that you will not be getting in another way. And sometimes, by this type of thinking, instead of inventing A, you end up inventing B, but B being more relevant even than what you wanted to do. So this, uh, this concept of uh, thinking 10x, and again, using the X that we have been using a, a little bit for, for a while, I think it is a message that I wanted to give to all of you to think about this future. No? Uh, remember, the, the transformation that has happened in the last 30 years, it is just the start. So we are all excited about the future. We think that uh, we live to, feed, to, to see the future uh, excited because of the possibilities, but also with some kind of uh, uncomfort, uncomfort no? in, the, in the sense that you cannot be relaxing in a chair, you need to be participant, and I think it is an opportunity for all of us to be actors and not only spectators of this digital transformation that is changing our businesses and our lives. So I hope that these two messages coming out of Google, how to withdrive innovation, has been uh, useful for you, and I think it is time for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Isaac, I have some questions for you. <clears throat> Do you? Uh, you've turned this into a football battle, by the way. <laughs> we have Barcelona, now it's Madrid. What else? Uh, okay, so, how is Google approaching travel? Well, I think there are many places inside Google where we're thinking about travel. Travel is a need, obviously, of, of all the billions of users that use internet uh, nowadays. And I think that when you're looking for, for a visa to go to, to a country, when you're looking for hotels, when you're looking for flights, in, in, in when we rank all the searches that we do into your tool, searches related to travel are very important. So we're trying to make it more accessible, more, more useful answers to what the people are, 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 are asking no? in, in, our, in our system. And this is only thinking about Google search. We try to partner also with the industry in, in trying to make those experiences for the users better. So I would say that we need to improve and keep on improving the, the, the solutions and the answers that are coming after the solution. Trying to be a little bit more proactive and not only reactive in answering your, your, possible, your possible needs. And again, doing that in partnership. That would be kind of the okay. three messages. And I have a question that bridges that. Uh, how are you making sure that your cloud services is constantly improving? Yeah. Well, th this is true for all Google. I mean, Google needs to keep on improving on everything. And, 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 and this uh, innovation mindset is something that we are developing every single day. You know, when we are... Uh, 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 managing the performance for, for employees, we are always asking the question of, okay, so what has you done different in the last three months? What have you explored in a different way? What is your 10x thinking in terms of how to approach? And, and, and that is also true for Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. Last three years alone, we have invested $46 billion on developing this infrastructure. In three years, $46 billion on developing data centers and fiber. A data center is not something that you build and then it is done. It is something that you need to keep on improving every single year. No? And after three years, technology is obsolete and you need to be keep on a refreshing cycle all the time. We are using machine learning to improve the way that we cool our data centers and we are improving our security and making a lot of things in security. So it's a lot of investment, money, thinking people behind keeping this innovation happening yeah. for the next three years. I, 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 can't really, I worked in the media business in the 90s as a creative director and produced e-learning. And I remember the same thing. You put on the computer and you took a coffee and eight minutes later it was ready for you. Yeah. It was like, so things have happened. A little. Uh, and do you enhance your SLA? If yes, in what terms and how will you differentiate from Amazon? Okay, I guess the question is about what type of SLA we have inside Google Cloud Technologies. And SLA means service level agreement, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the technology that we are offering to our customers, it is our same technology. So we don't have a different SLA for us. And you may not remember many times where a Google service was down. I mean, we are not perfect, but I think we have invested a lot to make these services as reliable as possible. If you go to the internet and you see the, the statistics of what has happened in the last few years, out of the three main providers, Google Cloud is the best in terms of reliability. 
So we do have as an SLA, we do sign uh, the, those SLAs, and we do have different services and products where you can go for higher SLAs if you want in terms of making your solutions as reliable as we have in, in Google, no? trying to, to do not have problems at all and making it completely relevant for, for your users. Okay. Uh, now, a challenging one, maybe. Why wasn't Google Photos included in the list of services? Yeah, well, uh, there's many, many services. Google Photos, by the way, I encourage all of you to use it. It is free. I don't know if you knew, but you have uh, unlimited space for your photos. And if you go Google Photos, I'm saying this to you because it's a good example of how to see machine learning in action. Three years ago, we were not able to differentiate a dog from a cat. Now, if you go to Google Photos and you ask for a German Shepherd, or if you ask for a West, West Highland Terrier, or if you ask for a Siamese cat, you will see the, the machine learning working and differentiating this type of things. But not only that, if you ask for a kiss, or a hug, or a hotel in Mallorca, or whatever, you will see Google Photos in reality. So Google Photos is one of the many examples that we have of solutions. In Google, we have hundreds of, uh, of services. And yes, it is true that I didn't mention it, but it's a very interesting service that many of our users are using every day. Yeah. Uh, we, I have a lot of questions. You're trending the question, uh, Twitter, whatever we can call it. So, uh, why, this one already, why Google failed to escalate Orkut? It sounds like my uncle in Mongolia. His name is Orkut. No, just kidding. <laughs> what, what, what is Orkut? Please uh, no, tell I'm us. Sorry, I'm sorry, but I don't know what is Orkut. So. No. <laughs> um, okay, we'll maybe post I that can one. find out later maybe on. Maybe we can. Because now to... everyone will be thinking, what is Orkut? <laughs> what is Orkut? Yes, Let, let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's call Mongolia and ask. Okay, so Google is a competitor of OTAs. What do you think? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert on that side, I have to say. My, my area of expertise is technology. But I think inside Google, we have the clear conviction that we need to partner to be successful. This is clear. No? So yes, it is true that we need to keep on rising the bar for whatever the users are telling us. But we are doing that in partnership with the industry. No? So I guess that the question may be related to Google Flights or Google Hotels or some of the other services. That if you think about it, it's all about how to make search more relevant for them. Okay, because it would be stupid not to improve the search capabilities that we have in our solution. If we know that people are looking for health, we want to be um, uh, useful for the people. This is part of our vision. No? So I think in terms of travel and hotels and, and flights, this is exactly what we're trying to do. But we're trying to do also in, in, in partnership. So I cannot go too much deeper because I'm not an expert on that, on that side, but uh, that is the spirit of the company. No? A uh, long one. Is it cheaper for a company to use your infrastructure to scale up rather than smaller cloud hosting companies that provide the same services, redundancy and performance? In my opinion, I have to say, I think yes, yes. The, this market is concentrating. I mean, the, there is an economy of scale coming out of having all those computers together. I mean, it is very difficult for a local provider, for a small provider, to have the efficiencies that you can get out of operating at a scale. No? So it is something that I think it is quite uh, understandable. But I would say it is not only about being cheaper. I would say it is also about being secure. So I want to underscore the importance of security. I think sometimes in the past, people didn't go to the cloud because of security, because they were thinking, OK, where, where is the information? In reality, what I think it will, it, it is starting right now. It is happening right now. If, it, if you really want to be secure, you need to be in the cloud. And this is not because Google or Amazon or the others are more uh, intelligent than the other providers. It is more because we are investing more, more money and we are investing more people on making sure that the security in our solutions is, is a super priority and a top priority. So security, even more important than cost. Cost, for sure, but I think uh, security, agility, scalability, those are the key reasons to go to the cloud. Last one. What is the best way to adapt Google employment engagement in a medium-sized company? Well, th this is a, I could say that there are a few books that, uh, where we have been open sourcing everything we do in terms of people. Uh, uh, G.co slash rework is a website that we have created in collaboration with the industry, sharing our knowledge about how driving engagement inside your organization. Because if you want to have innovation, it is all about having uh, 
most of your employees engage and feeling that your company is in reality their company and they are able to provide innovations and so on. So probably that would be my, my advice to whoever wants to go deeper. I will be around so I can give you also the references of the two, of the two books that I would recommend. And um, we are very, very happy to, to share that with everybody. And I think we have many things to improve. So I'm not saying that there are experts on that. But what I think it is different in Google, again, is that we do believe that people are the most important asset and we execute accordingly. So that's probably the, the thing we can, we can share more. When you showed this mind-boggling, you know, presentation with the development, you said innovation is the key, is key in here, and everything that's happening with this speed, and the speed is increasing all the time. I came to think about this story that probably all of us have heard about 1905, the director of the U.S. Patent Office, who said, who suggested that it should close the office since, quote, everything is invented. I like that. Uh, not, uh, everything is not invented, Isaac, right? So we're still there. Yeah, thank you thank so you much. So Great much. pleasure.